So in this video, we're going to look at the complete maiden voyage. This is a 2024 edition. Things have changed slightly over the years. We're going to unlock all the commendations. We're also going to collect all the available gold that will help us get started in the game and I'll, on our way to afford our first captain's ship. We'll collect all 10 journals, but I'll skip through the text of these journals due to further spoilers. Feel free to pause the video if you want to read them, but I encourage you to wait and read them during your first playthrough. So this is season 12 as a recording this. We're going to follow it through. Like I said, Maiden Voyage is a tutorial, so we're going to play that f through first. It'll give us a little bit of an understanding of uh, what to do in the game and how to play the game. And I'll give you a little bit more information as we go through as well. So we're just going to load up the pirate we created in the last video. We're going to hit play. Go across to Maiden Voyage. Let the game load up and set sail. First thing we're going to do is we're going to end up on the island and we'll see a ghost in front of us and we're just going to follow the interactions and every now and again I'll pipe up and just give you some hints and tips of how to complete all the commendations. Taking a little while to load up here. There we go. So here we are, spawned in on the island. My friend, you must be on quite the journey. I should eat something if I were you. A full belly can do wonders for your spirits. Once you're in good health, we'll speak properly. So obviously this is with the PS5 controller. So we'll hold, um, hold L1 to open the equipment radial. And as we can see, the only food there is the banana. So we're going to press up on the right analog stick to select the banana and then let go and we'll have the banana in our hand. Following the instructions, press R2 to eat the banana. There, you look better already. Maybe even strong enough to reach the sea of thieves. <laughs> Don't look so surprised. These days they call me the Pirate Lord. But back when I discovered this place, I was just a bold explorer like you. I dreamt of finding uncharted waters filled with treasures and rife with danger, where every sunrise brought a new adventure. You've been brave to make it this far. Not many do. Now you've one last crossing to make. You'll want some trusty steel at your side, though. There's a sword in those trees whose owner doesn't seem to need it anymore. Okay, we see the shining. This shining just indicates that there's treasure or a, an item to pick up. In this case, it'll be our sword. So we'll take a walk over and pick it up. Just follow the on-screen prompts. So just some information about using our sword then. So if we press triangle, it'll bring our sword out. If we hold L2, that'll block. If we tap R2, we'll swipe our sword quickly. If we hold R2, we'll lunge forward. If we block 
then hold R2, and then as we lunge, oh, I hit a tree, uh, press the jump button, which is X, we'll lunge a lot further. So I'll try that again without hitting the tree, hopefully, this time. So block, ready to lunge, and just after you lunge, you do a, a jumping lunge. There's far more to being a pirate than a blade in your hand and a love of other people's money. It's about finding your way through ancient caverns by lamplight, digging up long lost treasures, and raising a frothing great tankard of grog when you live to tell the tale. For all that, you'll need the right equipment. You can start by taking this old shovel. I stowed a few belongings around here back in the day. The map will show you the way. Okay, so hold L1 for the radial. This time we're going to press X, which will give us our quests. The map in this case is straight up, so I'm going to hold up on the right analog stick. And then if we hold R2, we can raise the map up. If you click on R3, you can zoom into the map, which is quite handy. And the X is where we want to go to. You'll notice the little red dots on the map. These are the red plants. You can use these for navigation. You can also see the wreck there, and if we look forward, there's a wreck there and three red plants. One, two, three. And if we look here, there's a red, big red plant just north of the X, and there's two further down in there. So we're going to follow those around. If I hold down R, uh, wrong L3, I can sprint. And there's that big red plant. And looking at the map. should be between the bit of green and the red plant which would be about here but before I do that let's pick up the first book so the first book is just before the door into this water just gonna quickly flick through as I said before so that's the first book let's go back select our shovel so we're gonna press L1 then we're going to press down on the right analog stick, come between the two, and dig. And that banging noise confirms we've hit it. So you tap R2 each time you want to dig the shovel. And each time the treasure or chest will come up a little bit further. Note that when you're sailing with a bigger crew, it takes longer to dig the treasure up. So we could bury the treasure. That'll become more apparent in the game later on. But in this case, we're just going to pick up and then carry it back to the Pirate Lord. Let's see if she still hides her secrets. Okay, so now I can open the chest. And then take the old equipment. So if you a press fine weapon, she'll serve you well out there. So different things we just picked up. So we just picked up a compass. There, now you look like a true pirate. There's plenty more to see, so why not stretch your legs and explore? I'll be here when you're ready to leave. 
So when you're looking for treasure with your map, it's good to know which way north is. So that's where your compass comes in handy. Also, if you're pacing something out, if you hold down L2 when you're walking, Sorry, if you hold down R2 when you walk in, each vibration on the controller is one step. So sometimes you'll go to a treasure map and it'll say you have to go to a tree or a certain rock. And then you've got to walk, for example, northwest three paces, hold down R2, press forward. And then you'll have three vibrations and that will indicate where you are. Other items we've got, we've got a bucket that will become more apparent shortly. We've got a, a torch or a lantern which we can hold up, put down and even put out if we wanted to. We can use that for lighting other things as well. The shovel we've already seen. We've now got a telescope. It lets us look at various things. Be aware that the telescope, the same as a sniper rifle, when you're looking at somebody they will see the glint from the uh, glass. We don't have any planks of wood yet, we don't have any cannonballs yet, we've got no food yet either. Throwables, we've got none, but if we press more, we'll notice we've got other things here. So let's start down here. There's different instruments that you can play, and if you're in the crew and one of you starts playing, you'll all join in at the same spot in the song, and you can all play different instruments. Got a clock which tells the time and it gives the date which is quite handy or watch rather which is quite handy for some of the quests where you've got to deliver certain things by a certain time another instrument so we've got a talking megaphone if you like so putting it this way around will make my voice travel further and it's directional as well However, if I turn it this way, it'll make me whisper. Accordion. A mug, which we can put ale in. You can get drunk, so be careful. I've fallen off a ship before now. Drum. And then finally on that menu is a fishing rod. So let me show you how to use a fishing rod. So you hold down R2 and release. You can catch fish without bait. We don't have any bait at the moment, so we'll see what we can catch. There are rarer fish and you need certain baits and to be in certain locations to catch the rarer fish. So the idea of this is once you get a fish, you use the left analog stick to move the rod in the opposite direction to the way the fish is swimming. That way it'll tire it out. If the controller's vibrating, that means you're holding it the wrong way. If the controller vibrates for too much, the fish will get away. So the fish is swimming to the right, I'm pulling to the left. If it's straight out, then I'm pulling up. But if it's vibrating, you know you've got the wrong angle on the rod. As soon as it drops down like that and goes slack, you want to start reeling in. Fish always put up a little bit of a fight. Again, just waiting for it to go slack. And it's going to fight again. And as soon as it goes tired, we're going to reel in. Closer it is, it's actually harder it is. Come on, little fishy. Give up. That should be enough. There we go. We've caught a fish. So as long as you've got space in your inventory for food and you've got five slots, it'll let you take it off the rod. And now we're going to cook it. There are three stages to the cooked fish. The first one, as you can see, is raw. We'll 
stick it on and it'll start slowly changing colour. What we're doing is we want to keep a look at uh, an eye out on the eyes. <laughs> Pardon the pun. As soon as the eye turns white, the fish is fully cooked and we can take it off. Leave it on too long and it'll burn. If it burns, it can catch fire, which is not very good if you're on a boat that's made of wood. We'll give that a few uh, seconds. Different types of meat take different amount of time to cook. As you can see, it's already changed colour, but the eye isn't perfectly white yet. So we'll just give it a little bit longer. There we go, it changed colour again, so we'll take it off now before it burns. And there's our fully cooked fish. Let's try out our weapons. So if you shoot animals, they'll drop meat as well, and of course you can always cook meat. And it works exactly the same way as the uh, the fish, it'll change colour twice, although you don't have eyes on this to go through. Just to speed things up though, I'm just going to take it off there. If I ate that now I'd be sick and I don't want to do that. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do, we want to look for these journals. So we've got one journal which was down by the wreck, as we said. So the next journal, you'll notice there's a waterfall here. If we go underneath the waterfall, out the other side, keep going to the end, and there's a book against the wall. There we go. Second journal done. I'm going to follow the path up. And we'll see the ship here. Need a key to unlock that. And that's where the money is. So we'll come back to that shortly. Up the ladder. And follow this up follow the stairs up and we'll see a key here at uh, wrong a book here next to the helm there's another book at the crow's nest so we're just going to climb up the ladder Lovely. To get back down the ladder, if you just tap on the square and then push down on the left stick, you'll slide down the ladder. So from here, we want to get across to the other side. Just going to drop down this path. Follow it through. There'll be a broken barrel, and next to the broken barrel is another book. There, we're going to come up this ladder. Up the next ladder. And you'll see a barrel here with cannonballs drawn on, on it. We'll take five cannonballs from there. This is how the uh, capstans work, just so you're aware. Not that this does anything here. There's a cannon, so we're going to use the cannon, load the cannonball, and just fire it off. The next commendation. We come back down to where the capstan is, you'll notice a broken mast. This is the next place we're going up, onto the broken mast and across. Just follow this round and then you'll see this pond. In here is where the key is. We're going to go into the water. Dive down a little bit and you'll see the key there. We're going to take the key just to show you where it is. From the angle we were at.
Then we're going to drop back down and unlock. Lovely. Down the next ladder. So this is where the majority, well, this is where all the gold is. So we'll take the gold there. And that gives us a nice 10,000. More gold here. And another bit of gold here. And the next book is right there. So that's it. So now we've got 26,000 gold. Back up the ladder. So the next place to go, there's a little ladder down here, I believe. I'm just going to find where it is. And if not, I'm just going to drop down anyway. There it is. So we're going to come down this ladder. And at the base of this ladder, there's another book. Lovely. Back up the ladder. Across the bridge. Now we need to get the peak of this second island. So we're just going to follow this up all the way to the top. And that'll give us our next book. We'll be coming back down to here in a second. Down where we just came from. Okay, so we've got to get through this door, and the way we do that is pulling on this lever. That lets us in. You'll see a washing line, and the next book is here. Just gonna follow it down right down into the depths of the cave we need to get across that drawbridge the way we're going to do that is using this capstan right across the bridge continue our descent to the cave Okay, another door. This is a different type of mechanism. So we're going to use a pulley. So using the left stick, press down and raise the door. Lovely. Next book is just up by these bars. There it is. That's the last one. All ten of them have been unlocked. Next thing we're going to do is a rowboat here. So we're going to climb onto the rowboat, just for your information. Rowboats normally have a chest on them, which has got some good stuff in it. So we'll take some of this stuff. If we sit here, we'll be able to use yours. So... L2 and R2 will pull both balls back at the same time. And turn and look where you're going. Oops. By holding, in this case, R1 and pressing L2, that help me turn. There's another commendation unlocked. Go back now and speak to the pirate lord. Okay, we're ready now to get onto the boat, so let's have a chat with him. Well, now, 
I say you're as ready as you'll ever be for what's ahead. Allow me to show you the path. The shroud is beginning to part. But you have one more task before your journey continues. You may be ready to sail, but your ship still needs repairs. Go and tend to her wounds. Oh, just to show you that um, sword lunge as well, when you're in the water and on land. So sword lunge, remember, was block, and then hold R2 to lunge, and just after, you lunge, press jump, and you see the speed that I went through the water there. Okay, so, we need to get that mass back up. The way we do this, pull it on the ropes. But of course, once a mass up, we need to repair it so it doesn't fall down again. In this case, we've got wood here. So walk up to the mast, and then we'll repair it. There'll be three breaks on the mast. Okay, lovely. We go down here, we'll see water in the boat. So this is where our bucket comes in Andy. You can bail the water, throw it overboard. Now we've got a dry boat again. I'll show you the layout of the different boats on a different video, but food barrel, wood barrel, and cannonball barrels looking like that. Okay, the next thing we need to do is raise the anchor. So use your left stick just to push forward and raise the anchor up. Now we're going to need to drop sails. So with the sails, the one at the back here sets the angle of the sails, which is important for the wind, and the one at the front sets the sail length. You'll see the uh, the burning braziers in front of us. We're aiming to sail between them all the way through now. When you turn your wheel, there's a little indicator your controller will With your vibrate. Fully restored, passage through the shroud now beckons. Take care on this dangerous last leg of your voyage. Threats of all shapes and sizes lurk in its murky fog. Keep the wind in your sails and an eye on that horizon, and I'm sure you'll have no trouble. Once you make it through, I will be waiting for you. A world of adventure beckons. Okay, as I was saying before he interrupted me, when you turn the wheel, you'll hear a knock and you'll feel a vibration. That just indicates when you're going in a straight line again. following these beacons through. We'll encounter various things on the way through here as well. Beacon should light up shortly. Mm -hmm. Ok, 
get near to rocks so you can get pulled towards them so be careful of that so that sound is a megalodon and there it is on cue Pulled them on the side by the current. Make sure that megalodon's gone. So when you're in the game, a megalodon can attack your ship. Passing through the shroud. Okay, so we've got a skeleton galleon. We get some shots on him before he hits us. Okay, so I'm out of uh, cannibals, so I'll get some more. Watch the water turn black. You see how the water goes inky black? That indicates it's a kraken. In a game, if a Kraken attacks you, your boat will stop and you'll have to fight it. Once the inky black water goes and the Kraken dives, we'll be free to get on our way again. Just sailing out. So as you see, had a few trophies pop then, and a few uh, accommodations. And the tutorial has made us have 26,000 gold to start us off. Personally, I'd save that gold now, and save up 250,000 to buy your first ship. Cheers guys, thanks for watching. I am a really small channel and I would really appreciate um, likes and subscribes on my video. I will be trying to push out a video every week or two, uh, but thanks for watching. Thank you very much.